Over 200 testified in support of the cash bail reform bill, including the Department of Public Safety and OHA. Among only 15 opponents was the state police union. And we felt this was a piece of legislation that never represented the community's interest and should never even have been voted on. It says a lot when the author of the legislation is now realizing that this isn't what the community needs. And I'm going to stop right there because you just heard from Brother Steve Keo in that news report. And he's on the air with us right now. And Steve, I can't thank you enough for taking a few minutes to join us. Aloha, brother. How are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. It's always great to talk story with you and your listeners. You know, I want to just remind folks every Monday at 7 a.m., it is the Shopo Hour, a program that is invigorating and educational. But you will have total transparency with Bobby, Steve, and Mark. And you've helped us quite a bit in the short amount of time that we've been on the air to frame these issues and to be very active. So, Brother Steve, your thoughts about this story, maybe expand on what you said in the news report. And again, 1567, what say you? Sure. Well, Rick, first of all, I just want to say thanks for all the work that you've been doing. I think the reason why Representative Matilshi. Decided that he wanted to、uh, come to his senses and understand that this isn't what the community wanted, is in large part because you spreading the word and then your audience and people really coming together and trying to take back our government.、Um, I had a chance to read over uh, Representative uh, Matayoshi's letter to the governor, and I do want to give him some credit. Let's give、mm-hmm. credit where credit is due. I, I can respect the fact that, you know, if he realizes that. This、uh, bill should have never gone to where it was. But we also want to reach out, like you were having your listeners do, Rick, and that is let's really try to reach out to the other legislators、mm-hmm. and get them to do what Scott did and, and write the governor and say, hey, you know what? We were wrong. We made a mistake. We're big enough to admit that. And let the governor know that this is a piece of legislation that we just don't want. And if I can just remind the listeners, let's just recap, right?、Mm-hmm. Mayor, Mayor Rick here in Honolulu, he's against it. The Department of the Attorney General is against it. The Department of the Prosecuting Attorney is against it. Every county police department within our great state is against it. I really hope that Governor Ige, even though he's not running for political office, I hope he listens to the people, I hope he listens to the different agencies. That are responsible for keeping our community safe. And I hope he steps up and he does the right thing, Rick. And, you know, the ACLU and other political justice reform advocates, they don't make up the majority of our community. They don't live here, they don't work here, they don't have a vested interest in this. We do, the community, the law enforcement agencies that protect the community. And let's just hope that the will of the people. Is going to be done. You know, Rick, I know, and I know you're passionate about this too.、Mm-hmm. Uh, Brother Steve Keogh, Vice President of Shopo, joining us. And after his appearance on the Hawaii News Now news report, that stated, as we've just confirmed and has been part of the vernacular for at least 24 hours or so,、uh, Scott Mariyoshi, I want to echo what you had said about credit where credit is due. I know that、uh, Representative Mariyoshi has made himself available in different forums with different individuals and not necessarily with those that are in support of the bill. We're privy to those discussions that he has had. For him to come to this conclusion should be reflective of other lawmakers. So, my intent is to continue naming those individuals who did support and sign off on this bill. To do exactly that, recant, let the governor know, veto is the way to go. And Scott m a r i o s h i had said, listen, we're going to take a look at this. Clearly, it cannot be this vague, it cannot be this broad, but there will be another version coming to us. Brother, I, I think it's obvious we'll be all on top of it、uh, with any changes and reintroductions. Yeah, and, and Rick, you know what? Everybody needs to realize that. We have judges that do their job in our, in our different counties. The judges are the ones that set the bail. We don't want a legislator that is basically intruding and interfering 
with the judicial system. Let's let the judges determine what the bail is. Because remember, this legislation, even if they revisit it, do we want the politicians telling the courts what to do? Mm -hmm. I don't see see how that's going to work, Rick. You know, let the judges do what they're supposed to do. The judges set the bail. And, And I just have to tell you, this whole concept that we need bail reform because of jail overcrowding, let's, let's just back up for two seconds, okay? If OCCC is overcrowded, then that speaks to the fact that we need to have a serious discussion about building another, another jail. And I know that me and the boys on your show, Rick, have talked about building another jail does not mean we want to fill those cells. It's just a smart thing to do, and it's good government. I would say that the majority of individuals that are in OCCC have gone through the judicial process. They've had their day in court, and they have been convicted of a criminal offense where it's been determined that the punishment from the courts is up to about five years in prison. Because as we've talked about on your show, people go into OCCC, they stay there for up to five years. If the offense is is over five years, then they get transferred to the prison. So the, re- the reason why we have an issue with overcrowding at OCCC is people are being found guilty. They're not sitting in OCCC because they can't make bail. That's where this is false. The judges come to the cell block at the main station and determine if, if, people, if offenders can't go to court the next day, the judge is not going to leave people to sit in jail. Our judges are actually very liberal when it comes to bail and setting bail and making sure people do not stay incarcerated while they're going through the process. We've covered this before. We have the best criminal justice system in the world. You're innocent until proven guilty. The reason why we have a bail system is so the offender is motivated to participate in the criminal justice process. That's it. And if OCCC is overcrowded, it's because we have individuals then that were convicted of an offense. And maybe they're getting 60 days in jail, 90 days in jail, three months in jail, three years in jail. That's why there are no triple C, Rick. It's, yeah. not, it's not that we have hundreds of people at OCCC awaiting trial. That's, that's not accurate. It's actually very misleading. Talking with uh, Brother Steve Keogh, and I'd like to bring up something that maybe we can cover on Monday, but I want to give a preview. Uh, we have a source that is reporting back that a... It, with uh, HPD and our, our great officers, that uh, the prosecutor's office uh, is not moving forward on any cases related to parks because they perceive it to be singling out the homeless. And this is a, this is a report that we'll expand on on Monday. But you mentioned before in conversations, lawmakers, yes. But prosecutors and judges, we need to be as vigilant as possible in the actions from the bench and what happens in the courtroom. You know, Rick, um, if uh, Prosecutor Alm and his deputies are taking this position, how disappointing is that? These parks are centrally located within our communities. They're a place of enjoyment for our communities. We take the kids there. We go there to get out of the house and get out into, into the environment. If this, is, if this is accurate, and Shopo has an open relationship with, with Prosecutor Alm, uh, we can certainly reach out to him and discuss this further. I think we'll be connecting with him uh, sometime before the end of the month. Mm-hmm. This, this is very disconcerting, uh, again, that we're going to allow certain criminal offenses to get a pass. Let's talk about the parks. Park closure after hours. You're not supposed to be there, right? Doing other things in the park, drinking in the park. Uh, these are nuisance crimes that actually, these quality of life crimes, Rick, I don't think they should be ignored. And I don't understand where the prosecutor's coming from. And like I said, Bobby and I, are, I think, are going to have a connect, uh, going to have an opportunity to connect with Prosecutor Alm, uh, the judge, sometime before the end of the month. And this is definitely something we can bring up. I'll tell but you it, what. It goes to show you, yeah, yeah no, it's just ahead. crazy. Yeah, you know, no, go ahead. No, Rick, no, please, Rick, go ahead. I just, yeah, I'm, I'm shaking my head here and just going, wow, what, what's next? Well, I think that's the key, is very open, very public, very transparent dialogue. Because folks, 
we need to be empowered, and we are empowered. We vote. We have that right. We have that duty. But we cannot make good decisions unless we have good information. And the exchange of that information in a very public domain, which is on the air, on this station, on this show, is essential. So I'm going to give mad props to you, Bobby, Mark, and also Mike Kitchens at Stolen Stuff Hawaii, Attorney Megan Cow, and others that are vo- that are vocalizing what we need to hear so we can decide for ourselves the path to take. I can't wait for Monday, brother. I'll, I'll, I'll be there. I'll be there. I'll be there. Looking forward to it, Rick, as always. Steve, uh, Steve uh, Keogh, once again, Vice President of Shopo. Thank you, brother, and I'll see you very soon.